This video is picking your first amateur radio. Well, now you got that new amateur radio license. Now how to buy some radios. But what radio to buy? There's a few questions you have to ask yourself. First of all, what kind of range are you looking for? Do you want to keep it really local? Or do you want to get a fairly good distance? Next thing, do you just want a portable for now? Or do you want to put it in your car? Or maybe have one at the house? The best thing that you can do is make an informed decision. Get some recommendations. See what other people have. And you definitely want to see the eHam reviews. eHam is a great source for reviews. The nice thing about eHam is they merge very nicely with Google. All you have to do is type in eHam and the model of radio you're looking at. And it'll take you right to the review. In this video we will not be discussing used radios. Only new radios. There's a lot more skill involved to buy a used radio than to buy a new one. And far less chance to get a boat anchor. So let's start out with the Yezu. Yezu has a 1900R and the 2900R. Both of them have 200 memories. The 1900R has 55 watts of output, and the 2900R has 75 watts of output. And the 1900R has an EHAM rating of 4 out of 5, where the 2900R has 4.4 out of 5. Now ICOM has the 2300H and the V8000. Both of them again have 200 memories. The 2300H has an output of 65 watts, and the 8000 has 75 watts of output. Both of them score 4.5 out of 5 on the eHAM rating. And lastly, we have Kenwood with the 281A. It also offers 200 channels of memory and 65 watts of power and holds a 4.5 out of 5 on eHAM. All three manufacturers have very good radios. I'm just going to talk briefly on mobile operation as I have a whole series on mobile operation. Make sure that you connect the rig all the way back to the battery. Don't jump her just off the fuse box. That'll just cause you a bunch of problems. Now we're going to discuss home operation. To have a base operation, you can use any of the mobile rigs that we've discussed earlier. Something to keep in mind, however, is the amount of power that it actually draws. If we look at our spec sheet from the IC2300H, you'll notice that it only weighs 2.4 pounds. However, it does draw 11 amps on transmit. So therefore, we're going to need a pretty good sized power supply for this real little radio. If we look at this chart from Astron, you'll notice that we need at least a 20 amp power supply. Now you might think that we can get away with that 12 amp power supply. If you notice there, it can take peaks of 12 amps. That would be great if we were only talking at intervals of about 15 seconds. So your best bet is to go with the 20 amp power supply, which is more than enough to handle the current load. One thing that you always want to make sure of when you're buying a power supply, make sure that it's a regulated power supply. There are some manufacturers out there that sell unregulated power supplies and they're much cheaper, but will also cause a lot of hum on your audio. A regular power supply, once plugged in, operates a lot like your battery in your car. So at this point, all you'd have to do is connect the radio to the power supply, connect the radio to the antenna, and you're in business. I hope this video has been helpful and 7.3s from N9LVS.